Hello and welcome to another Max QDA video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll provide a compact overview of all the visual tools in Max QDA, except Max Maps, which is so comprehensive that it gets its own tutorial. Let's start with a visual tool that doesn't require any preliminary coding work, but can be used directly after you've imported a document. For example, if you want to explore the contents of a text. That tool is the Word Cloud. In principle, word clouds can be generated for any part of your data. For example, for individual documents, document sets, or even for the contents of the retrieved segments window. Word clouds are essentially used to visualize the key terms within a text in a visually compelling way. A word cloud displays which terms occur most frequently in a given selection of data. With the help of the stop list, you can exclude irrelevant words and if you're working with MaxQDA Plus or MaxQDA Analytics Pro, you can view not only the underlying word frequencies, but you can also view the frequencies of entire word combinations by the corresponding entry in the Max Dictio tab. What's more, MaxQDA also offers you a word cloud option for your codes, which you can find in the Codes tab or by right-clicking on a document, Next, let's look at a visual tool that lets you visually represent the contents of a single document. In our example, it's an interview that's already been coded. Especially when interviews are quite long, it's often not easy to visually imagine the order, breadth, or length of individual thematic sections. With the document portrait, you can see it all at a glance. To open the portrait, right-click on the document, select Document Portrait, and all the coded areas of the interview will be scaled to a uniform size and evenly distributed in an adjustable window according to their order within the document. This way you can see the structure of the interview in one visual breakdown. Codes of the same colour are always grouped together in the document portrait. The default setting includes only coded areas, but you can also let the proportion of non-coded text be represented by white areas. By clicking on one of the squares, you can jump directly to the corresponding location in the document. Instead of just visualising the structure of a document, you can also compare the frequencies of codes. And if you want to compare two or more documents, the Sort by Colours function can help. Just as with all other visual tools, you can export the displayed visualization via these buttons as an image or in several other formats, such as Excel or Word. The document portrait is especially suited to documents that don't contain many duplicate coded segments. If you would like to visualize the simultaneous occurrence of several codes in a single document, the code line is your best option. Here you can see the paragraph numbers of the selected document as column headers, and beneath them you can see the code system with the occurrence of each respective code in the paragraphs. The length of the code stripes can either be visualized according to whether a code occurs at all in a paragraph, as we see it here, or we can measure the length of the code stripes according to the number of characters. Additionally, you can limit the display of the document to your screen width and thereby summarize it within these parameters. The code line is particularly useful for focus group discussions, where you can get an overview of all the contributions of individual participants in the focus group, or an overview of the topics or themes covered by the focus group as a whole. Beyond comparing the codes in individual documents, you can also compare codes across multiple documents using the document comparison chart. Here you can see which codes have been assigned within individual paragraphs of any number of documents. If multiple codes have been assigned within one paragraph, the coding stripes will share the available space. This visualization is particularly suitable for permanently structured data, for example structured interviews, in which for each interview the same paragraph contains a response to the same question. 
A very popular tool for analyzing the occurrence of codes in multiple documents is the Code Matrix browser. You can open the Code Matrix browser for individual documents, document groups or sets, or for different participants of a focus group. You can also restrict it to coded segments with specific weight scores. Varying sums of coded segments are represented by a standardized set of squares in corresponding sizes. If necessary, you can also see the exact numbers. An important advantage of the squares is not only the increased clarity, but also the fact that you can visualize the code frequencies with respect to different contexts. In the standard view we're looking at now, the smallest number in the entire matrix has been assigned the smallest square and the largest number the largest square. You can also calculate the square sizes only with reference to each individual column. Then you can quickly see which code has the highest frequency in a given document. Or if we convert to row calculation, we can see for each respective code in which document it occurs the most. As you can see, there are further ways to customize the output. For example, we can display the sum totals or binarize the values for individual documents. This visual tool is interactive too. By clicking on a square, the corresponding segments will appear behind it in the retrieved segments window. You can also print out the entire table, including all the coded segments represented by these numbers by simply clicking on the quote matrix button. Now we come to the code relations browser. It's similar in structure to the Code Matrix browser, except that here we're not looking at the occurrence of codes in documents, but at the common occurrence of codes. In other words, code relations. To do this, first select the codes you want to display in the rows and columns. Then you can determine how or when exactly common occurrences are counted. In the first option, the segments must actually overlap while in the second option it's sufficient if the coded segments are close to one another. With the third option, it counts as a common occurrence if the codes simply occur in the same document. After clicking on OK, you can now see which codes occur together more often or less often based on the size of the squares. Everything else here works the same way as with the Code Matrix browser. So, if you want, you can display the frequencies instead of the squares. And you can double click on a square to display the corresponding text passages in the retrieved segments window. An additional option you have here is to right click on one of the squares to activate all the documents in which that common occurrence occurs. In the code map, selected codes are displayed on a map. The more similar the way in which the two codes have been assigned in the data, the closer they are displayed to each other on the map. To create a code map, you can insert the activated codes here by clicking this button. Now you need to choose the level of analysis, i.e. whether the coded segments have to overlap in order to be counted, or whether it's enough that they occur close to each other or even just occur in the same document. In our example, the code's parents and siblings have appeared together so often that they've been combined in one spot. Here, in the top left-hand corner, you can subsequently change the analysis level I just mentioned. You will also find some further display options here that you can explore for yourself. The drop-down menu in the middle lets you display the points on the map in different colors according to various criteria. You can specify how many clusters you want to have calculated here on the right. And finally, you can choose to make the links between the codes be displayed in varying degrees of thickness. Just as the code map reflects similarities in the assignment of codes, the document map displays the similarity between documents. This can also be measured here by the assignment of codes within each document. But document variables can also be taken into account. After you've selected the relevant documents and codes, you can then select the document variables to be considered in the analysis. You can find further information on the methodological background as well as on the calculation and use of these similarity measures I've discussed in this video in our extensive online manual, which you can access by clicking on this question mark right here. And that's it! That was a brief overview of MaxQDA's visual tools.
We hope you have fun visualizing your data.